do not reuse the old bolt or sealing washers. The new banjo bolt provided with the pump has a calibrated bleed which is matched to the replacement pump. Next, reinstall and tighten the fuel drain manifold line hold down clamp bolt. Now, reinstall the fuel supply line to the pump and securely tighten the fitting. Install the other end of the supply line to the separator filter using the new provided sealing washers. Leave this banjo bolt finger tight until after the fuel system has been purged of air. Next, thoroughly clean all the high pressure fuel line fittings and connections to make sure no contamination or debris can enter the system. Now be careful to install each high pressure fuel line on the same pump outlet port position from which they were removed. When installing the lines to the pump, prevent the injection pump delivery valve holders from turning. Then tighten the lines to 22 foot pounds or 30 newton meters. Next, install the high pressure fuel lines to each injector, but do not tighten the lines at the injectors until the fuel system has been purged of air. To prevent the possibility of an air intake leak, coat the four bolts used to secure the fuel line support brackets with Mopar silicone sealant RTV, part number 43-18025. Then install and torque the bolts to 18 foot-pounds or 24 newton meters. Next, reinstall the air fuel control tube. Now, reinstall the oil dipstick and top engine cover. Now, swing the pump support bracket into position and torque the four bolts to 18 foot-pounds or 24 newton meters. Now, connect the two wires to the fuel shutoff valve. By the way, these wires are interchangeable. Connect the wire to the KSB solenoid. And for vehicles with an automatic transmission, connect the throttle position sensor electrical connector. Next, install the throttle bracket and torque the attaching bolt and two nuts to 18 foot-pounds or 24 newton meters. Then install the throttle linkage onto the pump lever ball stud and reinstall the throttle return springs. Next, inspect the closed throttle and wide open throttle accelerator linkage travel stops. To do this, first verify that the pump throttle lever contacts the low idle speed screw in the closed throttle position. For visual access, the TPS electrical connector has been disconnected. Then, with the aid of an assistant, depress the accelerator pedal to the wide open throttle position and verify that the spring-loaded breakover lever has moved off the stop and is against the breakover spring as seen here. If the pump stops are not adjusted as just demonstrated, adjust the linkage using the diesel engine throttle linkage adjustment procedure detailed in the service manual. Next, loosen the low-pressure supply line banjo bolt bleed screw at the separator filter and prime the system by operating the hand lever on the lift pump until the fuel flowing from the fitting is free of air. Then torque the separator filter banjo bolt to 24 foot-pounds or 32 newton meters and the bleed screw to 72 inch pounds or 8 newton meters. Next loosen all six fuel tube connections at the injectors and operate the hand lever of the lift pump until fuel is observed coming out of one of the high pressure fuel lines at the injectors or until the lift pump lever has been pumped a minimum of 30 seconds whichever occurs first. After achieving fuel supply at the injectors reconnect the battery. Before performing the next steps in the procedure be aware that the 59,000 kPa or 8,000 psi of fuel pressure in the lines is sufficient to penetrate the skin and cause serious bodily harm. 
Also, for your personal protection, it is critical to wear safety goggles, protective clothing, and to not come in contact with the fuel spray when bleeding high pressure lines. Also, when performing these steps, do not bleed air from the fuel system of a hot engine and do not allow fuel to spray on the exhaust manifold. With these safety points in mind, you can begin to bleed the high pressure fuel lines. With the fuel tube connections still loose at all injectors, place the transmission in neutral or park, set the parking brake, and crank the engine to allow entrapped air to bleed from the fuel lines. Then tighten all the injector fuel line connections. Next, start the engine and purge air from each injector fuel tube connection one line at a time until the engine runs smoothly. Then tighten all the injector fuel line connections to 18 foot-pounds or 24 newton meters using a special injector fuel line socket. After completing the bleeding procedure, connect an optical tachometer to the engine and prepare the vehicle for an idle check. To do this, ensure the parking brake is applied and make sure the throttle lever is against the low idle speed stop screw. If equipped, turn on the air conditioning and bring the engine to full operating temperature. If the vehicle is equipped with an automatic transmission, place the transmission in the drive position and ensure that the parking brake holds the vehicle at rest. Now, check and adjust the engine low idle speed to 750 RPMs, plus or minus 50 RPMs, by using the low idle speed stop screw. The final portion of this program applies only to vehicles equipped with an automatic transmission and describes the proper procedures for adjusting the throttle position sensor. To begin, the injection pump throttle lever must be in the low idle position, and the throttle lever must reach breakover when the throttle is wide open. Next, turn the ignition key to the on position. Now, connect the negative lead of a voltmeter to a good ground, and connect the positive lead to the center output wire of the throttle position sensor electrical connector. The connector must remain attached to the TPS. With the throttle lever contacting the low idle screw, the TPS output voltage should be one volt, plus or minus five hundredths of a volt. If required, adjust the closed throttle TPS setting by gently rotating the nylon adapter until the correct voltage reading is obtained. Next, open the throttle lever to the wide open position and check the voltmeter to ensure that the TPS output voltage increases a minimum of two and a quarter volts from the closed throttle position. After completing this service procedure, the removed fuel injection pump must be turned into the warranty material return center. To do this, make sure the pump is drained for approximately 10 minutes and plug the orifices. Use the replacement pump packaging and orifice plugs for return shipment. Dealers are urged to perform this service on all involved vehicles promptly and courteously on request by involved owners. For further information regarding this service procedure, replacement parts, parts return, and claim reporting, refer to the Dealer Safety Recall Notification Letter, number 605.